What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. We're here at Universal Orlando once again. We are under a week away from Halloween Horror Nights 33 beginning and that means there's all kinds of stuff happening around the parks to prepare for the event. We have new merch, we have the final touches on scare zones, the medallion is up, the posters are up, there's a lot happening. So we're here for one final update, maybe one last update. I don't know if I'm going to come back next week. For now, one last update. So yeah, we got a lot to talk about today. I want to waste no more time and hop right into it. Let's get it started. As you can see, we're starting our day in City Walk once again. It's about 11 a.m. The crowds are rolling in, but our first stop is going to be the Universal Studios store. So you just got a whole brand new display of Halloween Horror Nights merchandise, plenty of new merchandise that we have not seen before, and it's only here in the Studio store in City Walk. So let's go in there and see what's new. I guess the best place to start is with this Wall of Insidious merchandise. Right here we have a tie-dye shirt with the red demon on it and it says insidious on the back it just says halloween horror nights and the insidious logo again for some reason but really like the shirt i believe this is new just dropped today because i haven't seen it before the shirt here is 33 dollars like many of the shirts this year right here for 30 we have this rather plain insidious bag nothing much to it just the logo right there again 30 dollars i really love these glasses they do for horror nights and we have an insidious one with the red face demon's lair one of the ghosts from i believe chapter two red face demon the red door key face and the insidious logo this one here is 15 dollars. we have here an insidious trucker snapback nothing too crazy just the logo this one here like many of the hats this year is 30 dollars. we have this what looks to be a fanny pack here with the same design as the glass with all the characters there this here is 35 in my opinion i don't know if it's really worth it it seems kind of cheap it looks kind of like just a printed graphic but that's your thing it's here for you and then of course we still have the excellent preview shirt they did this might be the one that i get when it comes to insidious merch although the tie-dye one is calling my name as well and moving just next to the insidious wall we have a wall of quiet place merchandise here we have right here another tie-dye style shirt with the death angel on here i love this shirt this might be my favorite of the new shirts they just dropped it's got the slogan if they hear you they will hunt you on the back and this one here is 35 dollars instead of the normal 33 but i absolutely love this design let's say though you're not into t-shirts they have a cup here for you with the death angel on it and the same logo plus the halloween hornets logo on the back we have right here a quiet place scented candle with the death angels on it here after smelling this one it kind of smells almost like cherry ish kind of smell don't really know how to describe it this one here is 23 dollars they also have a keychain with the same design on it this here is 15 dollars they also still have the preview shirt with the key Key art. Honestly, I didn't love the preview shirt, but I do really love this new collection of merchandise with the Death Angels on it. Gets right to the point with this really cool design. I've talked about how cool it is, and I really love the shirt, but I also love the poster as well. This is $20, and I believe this is an 11 by 17. Don't quote me on that. That's what most of the posters normally are. But easily, the IP with the most merchandise is Ghostbusters, and they have a whole shelf here, plus another main shelf of Ghostbusters merch. Starting over here, though, we have this really sick wooden sign with all the different characters. Obviously, we have have Mr. Stay Puff there, we have Slimer, we have the Sewer Dragon from Frozen Empire, Garaka, and the Ecto-1 with Mini Puffs, as well as the quote from the first movie when they're on TV and they're advertising the Ghostbusters agency. And this sign here is retailing for $35. And just like Insidious, they also have a glass for Ghostbusters with the same design all along the side. Really cool, very like 80s vibe here. Kind of like the merch they did for 2019. This glass here is $12. They have a kid shirt here with the same design with Stay Puff, Slimer, and the Ecto-1. And this here is $25, a little shirt for the kids. And then we have this awesome hoodie with Slimer in the middle. Love the purple color here, also for kids. This hoodie here is $50, along with the other merch with this design. We also have our mystery set for this year. We have Mr. Stay Puffed, we have Sewer Dragon, Ghost Trap, Slimer, the Ecto-1, and Chaser being Garaka. And these are going here for $16. Moving over towards the middle, they have a large shelf here dedicated to Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. We have a mug here with this year's key art for $20. This is quite a big mug. We have some fun socks with the key art as well for $22. We have a coaster here with a sort of 3D style graphic. You see the Ecto-1 kind of pops out a little bit. This here is $12. Just like A Quiet Place and Insidious, we also have a Ghostbusters scented candle. This one kind of smells sweet, almost like marshmallows. Like the other candles, this one here retails for $23. And then right here we have the key art on another shirt. This one looks very similar to the preview shirt with Garaka, the Ecto-1, and the Sewer Dragon, as well as the arches. Also, they have this giant metal cup here with everything you want. Sewer Dragon, Arches, Garaka, Ecto-1, 
and a straw. This here is $29, but honestly, it's kind of worth it because this cup is huge. The camera isn't really doing it justice, just how big this cup is. They still have the preview merchandise, the hat and the shirt still available here. I don't know if I like this shirt more or the other one. The other one has brighter colors, but this one's got the Ghostbusters and it's got Slimer. And speaking of Slimer, they have another hat here with Slimer stitched onto the front. So we have the Ghostbusters logo and this fun purple and green design, also a snapback also $30. But Slimer isn't the only fun character from Ghostbusters getting some merch. We also have a headband here with the mini puffs all over it. This one here is retailing for $22. We have here the Ghostbusters event pin with the key art on it, as well as the Halloween Horror Nights logo. This one is going here for $19, quite a bit steep, but this pin is also pretty big. If you're someone like me who collects the lanyards from the events, we have a Ghostbusters lanyard here with a lot of the characters we know. Also like an embossed text here. Really cool. Probably going to get this one this year. We also have here a lanyard pouch for the Ghostbusters. Go with your lanyard. This here is $8. We have another house poster here for Ghostbusters with all the characters on it. Don't love that this doesn't say Ghostbusters anywhere on it. I probably would get it if it said Ghostbusters, but it doesn't. This here is 16. I wonder why the Quiet Place one is a bit more. Maybe it has to do with licensing, whatever, but either way, this one here is 16, also 11 by 17. And finally, considering this is gonna be a chilly house, they have a hoodie here for you. This is a zip up here with the No Ghost logo and the Halloween Horror Nights logo on the front, as well as the key art on the back. And this one here is $68. Moving over to the back towards the plushie section, they have this year's artist series merch which is themed to major suites we have a black t-shirt here with this major suites design i don't love the design it's not my favorite this here is 30 dollars in addition to the shirt we also have a candy jar thing kind of like a plastic tupperware thing with the major suites design on it it also says artist series on the back this also says artist series on the back of the shirt forgot to show that this here is also 30 dollars we also have this year's studio screamer set only five this year but we have eddie batilda Edgar Allan Crowe from Hollywood, Megan, and David S. Pumpkins here in this pin set. And this pin set is $45. It's usually a little bit higher, but they also have one less Screamer this year. We also have a really cool clear Studio Screamers fanny pack with all the characters in there. This here is $35. And they have a Studio Screamers long sleeve with all the characters. Love how Eddie's Chainsaw says HHN33. On the back, we have the Halloween Horror Nights logo, and this here is going for $37. Every year they do an IP design with all the IPs on it. This is this year's design with the Death Angels, Key Face Mancidious, Dracula's Daughter, as well as Otis sporting the blue and red. On the back of the shirt, we have Where Horror Lives, which is sort of the tagline for this year. They also have that design on a hoodie here. This is the back of the hoodie. And on the front, we have Otis with the Halloween Horror Nights 2024 design. I love that this is a pullover, not a zip up. Normally they do zip up hoodies, so definitely gonna have to get this one because I don't really love zip up hoodies. If you're more a fan of magnets, they have a magnet with that same design here going for $9. Here we have a mug with the same design here going for $20, like most of the mugs do. And finally, for this collection, we have a tumbler here with the design, as well as where Horde lives. This here is going for $27. Also, a returning favorite from last year, we have the Chucky Popcorn Bucket coming back. The first fill is free. This is $43.99. Some slight modifications to his design and some new phrases here, but pretty much the same popcorn bucket we saw last year. So if you picked one up, I'm not sure if you really need to pick this one up, but if you didn't, it's here for you this year. Over here on the other side, we have your variety of punk-themed designs. These have been available for a minute. I do though love this tank top here. This is really cool. Love the wild design here. Love the colors they're going with this year. Hats and bags of every variety, headbands, wallets, pretty much everything you can imagine is in this sort of punky merch theme design here, including this year's house shirt, which has all 10 houses on the back here, this sort of punk skeleton, kind of reminding me of Slaughter Cinema 2 and the Where Horror Lives tagline. I really love this house shirt. On the front, it just says Halloween Horror Nights here. Also in addition to the house shirt, they have the house poster with all the houses on it. I like to get these every year to sort of remember the houses of each event. And uh, this one's here retailing for $15. I think it says 15. Also, Lil Boo has invaded the studio store. They have all kinds of merch nice socks car coasters the stanley style cup that they had a few weeks ago pillows you got sippers here the sipper is back from last year they have the shirt that they had in the five and dime for quite a while and they even have this fun keychain for 18 dollars with a little plush little boo on the end and a really fun strap I like this stuff. I don't really mind Little Boo. I know some people have a real problem with him, but you know, it's okay. I know a lot of people like this merch. Uh, it's not really for me, but you know, more power to the people who do enjoy the Little Boo merchandise. All right, so I didn't cover every piece of merch that's in there because there's just so much. I tried to cover as much as I could, especially the different IP collections, because I know that's gonna attract a lot of people to buy merch this year, the IPs that are at this year's event. Overall, I'm really liking the new merch. I know a lot of people did not like the merch they had before, and it's definitely not for everybody, but I do like 
like the risks they're taking with the merch, the colors they're going with. It's a lot of fun. Also, I just want to say, I don't believe that's every piece of merch that's coming out for this year. I know some stuff that was announced has not showed up yet, like the little boot popcorn bucket, the Ghostbusters jacket, the button down shirt. I'm sure we'll get that stuff with the tribute store or at a later time. This is just the initial first batch of merchandise as we get closer and closer to the event itself. Oh man, there it is, the medallion. The posters are up. We're just a few short days away from Halloween Horror Nights. Wow, it, it's one of those things that like, it's just posters, it's just a medallion, right? But when you see it, you know Halloween Horror Nights is coming up soon. This is awesome. It's always a good time to see these medallions and I'm just so pumped to get in the park and talk HHN because again, we are so close. Okay, so over here in the entrance area where the duality of fierce scare zone is, we don't have many updates, but we do have a very minimal update over here on these trusses. Right there is the Halloween Horror Nights neon sign, and right here we have some pink fabric to symbolize Sinister, who is pink, or maybe red, or both. And over here on the other side, we have the cloth resembling Surreal, the blue cloth. Surreal is pretty clearly blue, but we have some fabric on these trusses indicating who we're gonna be seeing in the scare zone, Sinister and Surreal in Duality of Fear. All right, not much happening in the Duality of Fear scare zone, but right here next to Despicable Me Minion Mayhem, we have our first house portal for this year, set to be the entrance for Monstros, the Monsters of Latin America. Monstros is a house I'm definitely looking forward to, so I can't wait to go through this house portal into Soundstage 23A. Right here in front of our Red Rocket, we have our second house portal here in the Music Plaza stage. Right here is set to be the house portal for A Quiet Place, which is a house I'm very curious about. This portal is for Soundstage 22. It's where the Exorcist Believer was last year. The Monstros portal was where Blood Moon was last year. Right here next to Race Through New York starring Jimmy Fallon, we have our third house portal, which was Stranger Things last year. This goes to Soundstage 23B and is set to be Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. This house portal usually leads into one of the heavy hitters. It has for the past few years, so it makes sense they're putting Ghostbusters here. There's lots of queue space for the this house portal entrance. And right here past Jimmy Fallon where the tribute store normally sits, we have our fourth and fifth house portal where Dueling Dragons and Yeti was last year. We have what seems to be Insidious the Further and Triplets of Terror back here in the corner. This is a typical house location. These go back to Soundstage 24 A and B. All right, I talked about those two house portals and I did talk about the tribute store and here is our facade for the Halloween Horror Nights 2024 tribute store. Now the theme is sort of an abandoned city. I actually kind of like it. I think it's cool, it's wacky, it's wild, it's different than any of the other facades we've seen for tribute stores in the past. There's a blockade here, so I can't get too up close for you, but I really like the height they're doing here with the facade. It's really kind of tall. I wonder if they're gonna add more to it. I also think it's really cool that you're gonna enter in the side, like go in the side of the shipping container into the store. Really neat. Coming up to the torture fair, most of the zone is exactly as I talked about in the last video. We do have some minor cosmetic updates. We have some flowers there in the middle for the king and queen. And over here by the sort of barrel where they have this guy hanging, they have a wheel here. So I'm guessing a, a character is gonna turn that wheel and it will move this guy. We have the addition of a fun little pickle barrel here as well as some more little upgrades, little additions to the brazen bull section, a little bucket there. Very excited to see what these torture devices do in the scare zone. Obviously most of them are covered up because they have bodies underneath with gory scenes. We have some rotting fruit, some bugs all around here. Very cool. I just love all the detail that's going into these stages. And uh, I'm hoping for some fun moments here in the Torture Fair Scare Zone. Coming up to the Ghostbusters food booth, we do have some upgrades here. We have the addition of some characters on the signage. We have mini puffs all along Ivan's NYC Deli sign. And over here on the Frozen Firehouse, we have the addition of the Ghostbusters logo, which I mentioned in the last video, as well as Slimer. Love to see the Ghostbusters characters represented on the food booths as well. And shoot, I almost missed this, but we also have some mini puffs here on the sign for Ivan's NYC Deli. I love this little guy right here. He seems so happy to hang out at Halloween Horror Nights. Same dude, same. So right now we still don't have menus out, but last night some team members were lucky enough to try some of the snacks. We have a Stay Puffed S'more, which just looks like a s'more, but the marshmallow is in the shape of Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. And we also seem to have this Garaka's Death Chill, which is like a corn dog cheesecake, kind of wild looking. Right now we don't have menus out, so we're still waiting for what the food is gonna be like, but that's a little sneak peek as to what we're seeing for the food this year. Also speaking of food, here we have our Transformers bar, which is just a generic bar. You can get your alcohol at Horror Nights, but now it's being taken over by Fanta. And I honestly don't really love the art style. It's very like someone just went into a generative AI program and uh, said, punk drinking soda. I don't think Universal is necessarily to blame for that. We don't know the whole story. Sounds more like a Fanta thing, like Fanta's paying for this. So 
they kind of have the final say over the design, but not really digging it. And I know a lot of you are not digging it either. Right here over in Sting Alley, we have some more details for the Quiet Place food booth. We have some greenery up there, some props on both sides over here. Really love what they did last year with this with The Last of Us. So I'm excited to see them do that same level of theming for A Quiet Place. I love that they're adding more details relating to the movie, like the newspaper clippings that they had in the basement. Right here, you can see the window back there illuminated. And here, it's really hard to tell on the camera, but we have the silhouette of the Death Angel here. Again, it's during the day, it's really hard to tell, but at night, it will pop. And then they've added more stuff over here, some images of what looks to be the barn, the family home. Fun little detail. Fast and Furious Supercharge is temporarily closed for the season, but right here is the house portal for another one of our haunted houses. So right here, we're gonna have Major Sweets Candy Factory. You're gonna line up, I'm guessing in the same spot you normally do, line up over here, go inside of the Fast and Furious queue, and then end up at the tent over there. As you can see, Shea Alcatraz is back open. We're actually gonna head it to the San Francisco Candy Factory for some more updates pertaining to the Major. Last time I talked about Major Sweets invading the San Francisco Candy Factory, we have this purple, orange, and white trim here reminiscent of major sweets and now we have major sweets here on the cooler so we have the major sweets logo with a little boo up there major sweets candy co and all around it seems like major sweets is beginning to take over the san francisco candy factory i'm excited to see if we get anything exclusive for horror nights but even if this is it I'm so happy we're getting this fun little overlay here for Major Sweets. Really, the only update we have for Enter the Blumhouse is this poster for The Purge. Some more Purge imagery here. Reminder, law enforcement services will be suspended for a 12-hour period during The Purge. So, really hamming up the Purge presence in the scare zone. We also have the return of the barrels here. They were here for a minute and then they took them away, repainted them to be Blumhouse colors. I don't like them as much. I feel like they're a little more boring with just the basic colors, but we also have some candy that is glued down here. It's not just like somebody spilled their jelly beans here. So I wonder what this is tied to. Maybe Megan? Happy Death Day? Maybe? Or something? Maybe to tie into Major Sweets? I don't know, but either way, it's all we got in the Blumhouse. Over here in the San Fran merch kiosk, we have some merch that I didn't see in the main store. We have this Blumhouse shirt to tie into the Blumhouse scare zone. It's got the Grabber, got Babyface, got a character from the Purge, Megan, Blissfield Butcher from Freaky. This shirt here is $30, not $33 like the rest. And we also have a glass with the same character, same design on it. Here. And for this, you're going to be looking at $12. They have a lot of the other Horror Nights merch available here, but right now, this is the only place you're going to be able to find the Blumhouse merch. I'm sure eventually, when the tribute store opens and stuff, they'll have it elsewhere, but right now, it's only here in the San Francisco merch kiosk. Right here, we thought it was just going to be a generic Halloween Horror Nights photo op. We have a photo op for The Wolfman, only in theaters January 17th. I believe this is our first look at this new movie. This is the Lee Winnell Blumhouse remake. We have a backdrop here, we have a distressed floor, and we also have a character trigger making me think that the Wolfman is going to be here on this stage right here. So we'll be able to meet him and maybe even get scared by him. Honestly, they did a really good job setting up this photo op. So I wonder if this movie is gonna make its way to the event, maybe next year as the Blumhouse integration. If it does well, not sure, but very curious. This is actually really, really interesting to me because again, we don't know much about this movie outside of Horror Nights. So it seems like Horror Nights is gonna be the place they're gonna soft launch this character, soft launch this movie. Maybe we get a trailer, maybe not, but either way, we have this really cool photo op here. Right here, we have the Fear Factor stage and we have signage for Nightmare Fuel Nocturnal Circus, the one show coming to the event this year. Showtime's at 8 p.m., 9.30 p.m., 11 p.m and 12 30 a.m also the transformers bar is not the only bar being taken over by fanta as this want to haunt bar is here over next to nightmare fuel there's another one over there on the bridge but yeah i'm not a big fan of this artwork man i don't know i'm just not digging this artwork but i am excited for fanta to be at the event hopefully we get some fun mocktails or even some you know mixed drinks with fanta beverages but it's interesting to say the least over here we don't have any house portals but we do have two tvs and we have a warning sign typically associated with haunted houses making me a assume we're going to be using this entrance again for a haunted house or maybe two. Last year, this was the place where Dr. Oddfellow's Twisted Origins entered, and we believe this is going to be the place where you're going to go to Universal Monsters, Eternal Bloodlines, and Goblin's Feast. Right here next to the Men in Black bathrooms, we have a tried and true house portal location. We have another portal here set for Slaughter Cinema 2. This portal housed uh, the Darkest Deal last year, one of the old sprung tents in the back. Will it be two years in a row of being the house portal that is set for the best haunted house at the event? We're not sure. We'll have to wait another week to find out but either way here we go another house portal and now folks we have hit the final and perhaps the strangest house portal this year
here in an all new location, as you can see right next to the Simpsons ride. This is set for the museum at Deadly Exhibits, which very curious about this house location and uh, curious what that line is gonna look like. Cause again, all new location here, very interesting. Before we leave the Simpsons area, I do wanna talk about a little update to this food truck here. Last week, there was no theming here. And now we have a little bit of theming. Front sign piece with some bloody handprints and white, blue and pink colors. I think this ties to Triplets of Terror. I'd really love if they had like a fun birthday cake for sale. I got a Barmy birthday cake, but it's bloody or some funny little twist on it. But yeah, again, just waiting on those menus. Universal, when are you gonna drop them? All right, coming out of Central Park, we have this large truss here. You're probably wondering, is that another house portal? No, it is not a house portal. It is where our directional signs are gonna go. Basically telling you what houses are this way, what houses are this way, towards the back of the park, where all the houses are located. Maybe not all of them, but a good chunk of them. You're gonna see these come up around the park in key areas, and we have one right here in Hollywood. And right here in Battery Park, we have the HHN bar. The Peacock bar is no more. We're having the HHN bar here. We're gonna be meeting and greeting characters from the original haunted houses of this year's event, which I think is so cool. You normally don't get to take pictures with any of the characters in the haunted houses because you can't take photos in the haunted houses. So this is a fun little way for you to get those photos with those original characters you really wanna see. A couple have been teased already, the skull punk guy from Slaughter Cinema 2, as well as goblins from Goblin's Feast. And here it is, the HHM bar. Not crazy about the name, not really crazy about the sign either. Over here, of course, we have the bars themselves. And over here, we have platforms with stairs, four of them, making me think characters are gonna be going up and down on these platforms rotating around the same characters won't be here all night long but it seems like we are getting a good batch of characters coming out for the HHM bar. And I want you to drop it down below. Who do you think we'll see at the HHM bar? I have a bingo board here that I made for some characters that I think we could see at this bar, some characters from the haunted houses, maybe characters from past event years. But let me know down in the comments, who do you think we're gonna see at the HHM bar this year? I think it's really interesting, really love this concept. I think the Peacock bar was kind of the stepping stone for this to eventually happen. So really excited for this. Definitely gonna be checking this out on night one. However, the most exciting event we've seen in this video are props in Hollywood. Finally, the Demon Queen Scare Zone has some prop work here. Right here on this side and the other side of the Scare Zone, we have these freaky trees here. Uh, not sure what to make of these. We see some like webbing here. We see some wiring, but they're on either side of the Scare Zone, making me think maybe we could see a, like a Demon Queen sign stretching from both sides. And right here, it's kind of half covered up. We have some portals for the Demon Queens and their minions. Don't really think anyone's going to be standing up here because it's not like flat ground, uh, but really love the design here. Really love the colors. They definitely pop in person. And because these are covered up, makes me think Think we're gonna be maybe seeing a body here on these portal platforms. The reason I say there might be a body under here is as you can see, there's a little skeleton hand. It's nothing crazy, but you know, maybe we'll get some more in the coming week or so. All right, folks, so that's it for Universal Studios Florida. We are gonna head up to Islands of Adventure because there is some merch in the All Hallows Eve boutique that is not available here in studios for some reason. All right, we've made it to the All Hallows Eve Boardwalk Boutique. Let's see what kind of merch we can find in here that we haven't seen yet. Really, the merch I came in here for is all in this little section right here. We have our Universal Annual Pass Holder merch for this year, Mel's Die-In. This is an incredible shirt. We have a Mel's Die-In metal sign here, Halloween Horror Nights, EOAP. This is $25. We have a Mel's Die-In coaster here for $12. And we have the Mel's Dying apron pin. I really love this pin. This is our AP pin for the year. This is also $12. And another really cool poster, we have Batilda, which is, I think, the renamed version of Patricia from last year's Shipyard 32. She's a character who's been with Horror Nights for a minute. Looks like a cool comic cover with blood splatter on it. This is really, really neat. This here is going for $20. It's not pass holder, I don't think, but it is, you know, catering to the Universal fans. Here we have the Lil Boo magnetic shoulder pal. It can hang out with you during Horror Nights. I think this is going to be a hot item, and it is retailing for... $20. And right here we have Chucky and Tiffany back on a shirt. Want to play? This looks a lot like the Bride of Chucky uh, movie poster. And they're even selling a NECA Megan mask for $65. I don't really like how this looks. It looks kind of uncanny and $65 is pretty steep. But if you want a Megan mask to not wear to the event because you can't wear masks, here you go. Right here, 65 bucks at the All Hallows Eve boutique. Also, as it states here, the lanyards are $16. And we have this really cool, like, punk lanyard, kind of the punk style of a lot of the merch. I really like this one too. I'm kind of torn whether I want this one or the uh, the Ghostbusters one. For my pink collectors, they have a three pack with sort of the punk style. They have another three pack with Lil Boo. And I believe these pins are also $19. And finally, we have Chucky and Tiffany on pins with their knives. And this here is also $19. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I do have a couple more videos out before opening night, but I believe this will be my final in-park update because I don't think I'm going to come back out until Halloween Horror Nights begins. Of course, there are more videos to come about Halloween 
Halloween Horror Nights, my review of the event, and things of that nature. We'll also be talking stuff outside of Halloween Horror Nights once the event starts. Things like Epic Universe, the future of Universal, and Halloween Horror Nights. So if you like videos like this one and like those, be sure to let me know by leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. It would truly mean a lot. Let me know you like videos like these and you want me to make more of them. I, of course, want to thank you all for watching this video. Until the next one, stay spooky and take care, everybody.